I'm very happy to have with us another retired person from the armed forces. This time it's from the Air Force. Uh, I'm very privileged to have with us uh, Thomas Verghees. He retired from the Indian Air Force. Let's listen to him. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. And uh, I just want to say uh, a little bit of my background. My, I was born in Chennai, Madras, and I did my schooling, everything. My father was an advocate in the Madras High Court, but he died fairly young. And uh, then my mother took up to teaching, and she brought two of us children, um, me and my sister, sister older to me. She's a doctor in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, so that's a little about my background. Uh, somehow, uh, I do not know whether it was the school influence or the church influence. We've, we've been brought up in a way of being caring and loving to people. And this has been uh, something which has ingrained in me. A little bit about my father. My father, though he was an advocate, uh, he was... Uh, uh, I would call a nutcase. Uh, why I'd say nutcases? Because he would go to the uh, um, police lockups and tell uh, and find out why the people are there. And uh, he will find that there are a number of people who don't deserve to be in the police station. And this he would bring, uh, he would identify one or two of them and bring them home. And my name would be. This would be around 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night. And my mother, young, I mean, he died at 40 years old. Uh, and my mother, a young bride, would be surprised, uh, a young wife would be surprised who is coming. You know? And then she'll tell very politely to my father, we don't have uh, extra food. He, my father would say, no mind, you just feed, we'll see, like that. No? And yeah. then my, 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 this is my mother's uh, side of the story. My mother would say, that uh, uh, where will this person sleep, no? He said, oh, that room is there, he'll sleep there, no? Just imagine a, a, a lockup case, landing up at a big fed and then the way to sleep at, at home, no? And yeah. she would say, she used to tell me later on, much later on, I used to be terrified with the, having a, a, a lockup person in the house overnight, no? Yeah, well, that's that's something the nutcase that I have got it in my gene. Yeah, and this is something which is being uh, I've liked doing something which is not necessarily a conventional type. I joined the Air Force by I would say it was a chance. I I was at IIT Madras, and uh, I said let's go and have a look at. Let me go and have a look at Mysore because there was some auditors in SSB. I said, what is this SSB also? I'm not very sure. He said, uh, the attractive part was from Chennai, I've never gone to Mysore. I said, let me go and see uh, Mysore and I can see Vrindavan Garden and I, I'll see what is this uh, SSB which people talk of. No? So I went there and there were 30 of us in the batch. Uh, I was uh, called and then was feeling bad that I spoiled somebody else's chance, no? Yes. Yeah. Because I got selected. So I joined Air Force, uh, not with any intention of joining the Air Force. Of course, we had the 71 war. Uh, I joined in 72 July. There was a feeling that we do something for, uh, to run away from the country was possibly the easiest thing to do because my sister was already there. Um, and uh, I had relatives there, they said, come over to US, no? And uh, to be very frank, uh, I did apply to a number of universities, but none of them offered me any assistantship or uh, scholarship. They said, you come here, we'll see, no? So I, uh, that's how, uh, then I joined there. Um, I, I was, I wanted a job already, and I said, uh, okay, then let's take this. And my uh, professor told me, the Air Force is a great uh, career. Okay, I said I joined and I uh, was quite an enthusiastic person at that time. But then I found that uh, the Air Force uh, has a, had a rigid uh, regimentation 
which was not uh, in my uh, blood, no? I, I did not like to say SR, SR, three bags full when there was no bag or of bull. So <laughs> I became a sort of rebel. Uh, I, used to, I, I used to get into conflict situations with all my seniors, uh, but not with my subordinates. My subordinates and my colleagues all who used to love me. And we were doing a good job. Uh, a very brief thing. Uh, I... I did, uh, uh, those days, uh, I'm talking of 73, import substitution was being talked off, and I was working on the Aluti helicopters, and there was something, I, I, I did the technical branch, I'm not a flyer, I, I was in the technical branch, and there was a shortage of this tensorometers, it was a French Aluti um, uh, um, helicopter, and I looked at it, I said, this is another rocket science in it, three plungers and this thing, and I made one, a prototype of it, and uh, I sent it to see in the in the air force or in the military. There's a, a rigid hierarchy, so I sent it to the Eastern Air Command because I was in posted in Bangalore, my first posting, no? Yeah. And, uh, probably they did not find anything. They must have dumped it into the trash. They said one pilot officer, pilot officer is a junior most uh, rank in the air force, so they must have trashed it. And uh, so then I sent it directly to HL because HL was the people who were doing the servicing of the artillery engine, the engine and the air, helicopter. And they found it something worthwhile. They sent them, um, uh, those days it was a um, uh, slow mail, no? the mail, or I do not know. They sent it to air headquarters. And air headquarters said, okay, what is this? So they ran up to the Eastern Air Command uh, 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 chief. And he rang up to my station commander. My station commander rang up to my chief engineering officer. He said, what is this happening in your unit? Somebody has sent something like that. Uh, and I was asked an uh, explanation because we, I broke the convention of sending it through the normal hierarchy. Yeah. So uh, I straight away was feeling, um, uh, I, I got uh, angry with the Air Force, I mean, with the, with the people. Because they said uh, I should follow the protocol. I see here I'm trying to save foreign exchange with the country and I'm being asked an explanation. So I said I want to interview with the, uh, the chief of the Eastern Air Command. He was, uh, uh, I think he was a air vice marshal. So they said, what's the problem? I said, that this is what happened. So the station commander was the former, uh, who became later on the chief of air staff. He understood. He said, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, I'm going on leave. When we come back, I was young and full of uh, energy. And he said, when I come back, anyway, that's a long story. I will not continue with that. Now, so somewhere I realized that I'm not fit for the Air Force, no? Yeah. Though the Air Force considered me fit. They yeah. would give me an exceptional uh, thing. I, I, I was either a go or a no go. So I put up my application for release. They said, no, you're in a permanent, permanent commission. You can't just leave like that, no? Okay. So, uh, in spite of all that, I learned a lot of skills in the Air Force. The Air Force taught me a lot of interpersonal skills, dealing with people, getting work done, and things like that. And uh, at that time, I'm, my, as I said, my father died when he was small. So, when I was small. So, I put an application uh, saying that my mother is alone in um, Chennai. Uh, Madras, and I want to release. So they said, you can't. You, you are a permanent commission. No? So yeah. I kept at it for a long time. So that was a, a thing. At that time, I said, okay, let me ask for a release from the Air Force. No? So I put the application for release, and they all said, this chap is doing well in his work. Uh, how can we release him? No? Yeah. And then finally, uh, I kept on trying. It landed up uh, I got the, uh, so when I put my reason as my mother was alone, they said, okay, we'll post him from Bhagdogra to Tampuram, Madras, the, the Air Force station there. And that will solve his problem, no? But yeah. that was not the real reason. Probably if I really told the real reason, probably they might have released me or uh, whatever be the thing. They posted me to Madras. And then I go there and they say, I want to, my mother was not in Tampuram, of course. Is that it? We, we don't have, we had that, uh, we can't stay away from the mess as a bachelor. 
So I went to my station commander and said, I want to go and stay with my mom at home. You know? I said, no, no, you can't. You're a bachelor. You get married. And he, he said, uh, no, I can't just marry up like that to anybody. <laughs> so uh, that's the story. <laughs> that's the background. Okay. Now, so somewhere I got dissolution. Uh, I, I worked on a lot of uh, devices. You know, the the scab, the bird hits was pre predominant in those days. Uh, it's still there, bird hits. And I developed a certain thing with the thing which was again appreciated by some or said you are, you are supposed to do this one why are you doing all the other things no yeah so i did it more as a passion what i wanted to do and uh, so that's how when i came to chennai i started working for uh, uh, there was a SOS children's village i should see it was a, it was a very satisfying thing uh, going to that I don't know if you don't know about this SOS Children's Village. Yeah, I know uh, about it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I said, okay, this is what I want to do. So after working hours, I would go around and see what I could do. No? Then I, there was a sudden uh, requirement of a, of a person in uh, Bangalore for the examination board. So they said, okay, this chap is finished his tenure there in Tamaram, that is Madras, Chennai. And uh, I came to Bangalore, and there I fell in love with an organization called the Association of People with Disability. Mm -hmm. So, so that's where I started. I started as a volunteer. I would go there and say, "What can I do?" You know, and they would be confused with me. I said, uh, "No, you just uh, uh, we don't know what you can." They were confused. I was confused. So there was some press coverage being. Uh, there was some uh, function. So I just asked innocently, can I do some press coverage? Not that I had any experience. So I did that, uh, press coverage, and the committee people were all retired judges and other uh, people very uh, older than me. Uh, it came in the newspaper, uh, uh, the front page was of this small function, and the photograph on the left side was Israel attacks Lebanon. Yeah. I'm talking of uh, long, long, I mean, the, I'm talking of 75 uh, or something like that. No? Yeah. So the whole committee saw this news report and said, okay, we'll induct this chap into our committee. You know? So I was the youngest. Uh, just imagine I was around uh, 26 or 27. And uh, they said, you come over and uh, you'll be on the board. I said, I do not know what is this board member and things like that. So that's where I had. Uh, my next thing. I got posted out of Bangalore. I moved out to different places, Chandigarh, Delhi, and other places. And everywhere I had this, this impact of people, disadvantaged people, was a passion for me. And uh, I would be their ambassador, roaming ambassador. I, would, I could walk into the uh, Ministry of Social Welfare. Those days, uh, there was no HR or anything like that. Ministry of Social Welfare, because uh, I could show my card and they would let me go through and I would do the follow-up work for the... So that's how I got into this line and I realized that this is something worth, worthwhile. And I kept trying to leave the Air Force and then I got married and then I lost my guts to leave. The... So people said, what are you going to do when you leave Air Force? I said, I'll search for a job and if you don't get a job, well, you open a cycle shop. So you're going to open a cycle shop, you're leaving a prestigious class one officer uh, job, and then you're going to do a cycle. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do what I like. No? So that's how I got. And then my mother had Alzheimer's. That drew me closer to the old age issues. No? And yeah. I will see people who are older are probably not even kind of worth uh, talking to, worth cons being considered. And I did not have a clue about what this Alzheimer's was. My sister being a doctor, husband also was a doctor. They would come once in a while, I mean, once in two years or something like that. And they did not identify the Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's in those days, I'm talking of uh, 76, 77, 78, was not very much understood. So I said probably this mother requires some psychiatric treatment, took to the hospital, military hospital and all that. And it was... Uh, Everywhere, people are quite confused what is happening. I was confused. 
and then that was my uh, start with uh, the aging community you know see yeah. it's always easy for the younger for children to be looked because they are blooming flowers but when you're talking about older people generally the feeling is anyway they have lived their life uh, they've got their food they're not being looked after they've got a shelter where do they want anything else no yeah so that attitude those days and even now i don't think it's any way different i see a lot of people older people their children want to do a lot for them and they say okay you'll stop working if it's a mother and don't go into the kitchen don't do anything now what does a person with an active brain do you know i'm not talking yeah. about alzheimer's i'm just speaking in general so they say okay we are lo- we are looking at you you don't have to do anything like in a prison no yeah a lot of restrictions you should eat that you got sugar you got bp you got this thing you that i can't do my any, any of my things no yeah so that's how i started moving more into uh, the senior citizens issues and then i found a lot of people being taken to old age homes at a, my, my, my i found that pe- when i visited old age homes people are not happy they got all the facilities i've seen a lot of old age homes uh, all over the all over the uh, country as well as in, uh, i've seen in cleveland also where i used to go and visit once in a while my sister uh, people are not happy relocating to uh, a home away from their own environment you talk to an elderly person and say you shift your house there will be a lot of resistance to change you shift from one room to another room no i don't want to shift and uh, we become more rigid in our thinking as we get older right. we're talking not very good so yes. that's issues so now back to how uh, the thing i realized that what we need uh, i i went to the i used to go to the um, red cross home in bangalore and uh, i've seen the people there war veterans uh just lying there they are given food and all those things i said this is not the the right thing to do they should be allowed to live with their family and see what but when you come to the family side the family members are they don't know how to handle an elderly person and uh they are given food they are given a bed and all that uh, something like a charity you know then i realized that most people don't like to move to an old age home or a retirement home and that's where this concept of um, uh, uh, assisted living thing caught on to me and i took part in the smart 50 contest at government of india in uh, 2018 2019 uh, this was a joint uh, thing uh, organized by the indian institute of management calcutta there were 15000 applicants worldwide and uh, this project at that time was not called sky blue it was called project vishram and uh, from the group 15000 applicants we got shortlisted to the top uh, 4000 and then we came to the top 3 300 and then i went for a presentation in indian institute of management bangalore for the final uh, um, shortlisting and uh, the people said concept wise everything is good but uh, we don't have a working model no because at that time uh i was trying to get this app at that time also though it was not in the present form mindtree you know mindtree which is taken over by rasnin tobro uh, i i dabbled in the stock market because uh, uh, when i realized i quit my uh, first career after exactly 20 years of service because i found that there was no no point getting in conflict situations with my bosses uh, though and they were surprised why am i putting my application now really they said Uh, i'm not uh, fit for the air force they said no no you are fit for a very much for you should climb up the ladder and all those things i know thank you uh, i didn't like that i had a lot of individuality and uh, things like that so uh, when i so before uh, leaving the air force i realized that i i could dabble in the stock market and make the same amount of money which the air force was paying me you know i said then where should i work you know so yeah. that's why without a job so i i quit exactly 20 years i joined in 72 i quit in 92 with 20 years the minimum required 
uh, thing where I would not be asked any questions. So uh, luckily I got superseded and that was a good ground that uh, if you are superseded, you can, uh, there will be no questions asked. No? The hierarchy no. does not want a junior to be your boss. No? Right. So came out and then uh, I looked around at what are the areas where I could, uh, I was more involved with the Association of People with Disability. I joined as a volunteer, then I became, uh, as I said, a committee member, a trustee, a vice president. Then I said, why don't you take over this as a secretary? It just to started in 1959. And uh, it had grown to a fairly good size. I said, uh, no, uh, people who manage, unless you, you have uh, orthopedic disability or other thing, people will say, OK, this chap is coming to boss over us. So I said, I, I did not take up a thing. I'm still on the board of the Association of People with Disability as an advisor. But I, I like my role. Uh, I, uh, OK, then comes to what, ha what happened to this uh, elder thing. So there was an organization in, uh, there is still an organization uh, called Ashwasan. Ashwasan was started by uh, two elderly people, not too old. Uh, they started it to the intention of giving some sort of, bring a smile to uh, people, no? And then I would take in my own car people from, I'm staying in Jalwai Vihar. After retirement, I settled in Jalwai Vihar. A post Naval Housing Board called me. I used to take in my car to people to Palace Road where the main Ashwasan was located. Mm -hmm. I realized that we can't keep on taking people from one place to another. So we started the outreach center in Jalwai Vihar. So this has been running for about 30 years now in Bangalore in Jalwai Vihar. And uh, tomorrow, every last Sunday of the month, we meet. Nothing earth-shaking. It gives a platform for people to meet, to mm -hmm. share to share their uh, issues. Well, they're not, as you, uh, the, the beginning, you mentioned uh, that uh, they don't want to, nobody wants to listen to anybody, and particularly the elderly, they want to talk to somebody. Yeah. Uh, so th that's the issue which happens is, I realized that we could have a group here, and what would we have with not doing any earth shaking things, a simple games, party type of games, some snacks, because they can come and eat here whatever they can, because at home they'll be said, you can't take all food, you can't take all those things. Tomorrow is the last Sunday of uh, uh, February. So yes. tomorrow is a, a meeting here of Ashwas and Jalwai Vihar, which has been running for about 30 years. No? Wow, very so, good. <laughs> so this has been going on. Okay. Back to the main issue of Sky Blues alerts and services. Now, initially, the thinking was that it will be, uh, as I said, that we did not get through the funding of the, the funding of the Smart 50 counters was one crore. And they said if one crore with that, uh, so I took part in that, but I didn't get it at that time. It was more, of, still it's a more, more of a concept stage. Because when I go to the app, I'm in LinkedIn, as you have seen, I've got something like uh, 6,900 uh, contact, mostly with the elder groups and elder persons uh, or people working for elders. And uh, they, they uh, I tried to put it on LinkedIn saying that I want to add that up because I knew that technology could cut down the cost. Mm -hmm. Because we don't, we don't require to build up retirement homes or old age homes. Because people won't be happy in retirement homes, old age homes, and most of the people, most of the places where retirement homes, old age are located far from the city, and they'll be cut off from the civilization. So I said it has to be some sort of place which are, is a familiar place. So I would like to stay in my own house and uh, talk to my own whoever is a milkman or a paper wala or the Kirana store person. So that's how this concept of thing was there, but the app was not getting developed because when I put it on LinkedIn, there were a lot of people who came and said, we'll do it. And they all talked in terms of hourly billing rate in dollars. No? And uh, though I did, I, have, I made some amount of money in the stock market. I, I couldn't just put all my money into that. In fact, I've spent a lot of money, my personal money into this, uh, those days it was Pradik Vishram, uh, this sky blue thing. And right now it's still going on. Uh, uh, so uh, I got the 
armed forces also interested the Siberia commander, uh, but then they've got their own priorities and things like that. So that's a stage. Now the sky blue is a very simple concept. Every day, it's a free, it's a free alert service. Uh, there are two segments of it: the sky blue alerts and the sky blue services. Mm -hmm. Sky blue alerts is a free service because there's no you're using the WhatsApp. It's a free service, and most of the people have got uh, the phones. And today, uh, a smartphone is not a difficult thing for anybody. Uh, so I could talk to a few people and we've got 25 small groups. Uh, each group, if it's too large a group, then nobody really understand, knows anybody else. So we made small groups of five to eight people and we've got 25 groups. And I created this, but the challenge is that if one person does not respond, unless I track through the, all the 25 groups and each group five to eight, so it could be anything from 200 to 300 people, I would not come to know. So that's how I got this app developer who's, uh, see the, the issue here is the app developers are mostly young people. Yes. And they have, they, it, it, it gels well there with them because they've got their parents too. They may be working for projects worldwide, but they are not happy that they're not able to do for their own parents, no? Right. Uh, I, I, my two children, my two children are in uh, North Carolina. So I go there and I talk to the, them as a little. They are also not too feeling too happy that uh, they are working with a whole dad. One person is working for Caterpillars and the other with with uh, the, with uh, HP. So they know the issues. They know that they are working for global projects, but not able to be supportive to their parents. And this is the same with all the people around where even outside Bangalore, when you go to I go to Kerala and uh, the children are all working outside Bangalore, uh, outside Kerala. So the elderly people are again felt left out. There are individual houses which they don't want to move out to the children's place because they are a misfit in, in a city. So this is where the sky blue alert services come. Small groups. So just to say, now I've given a small background in the um, uh, thing like this. There was an elderly lady staying in Jalwai Vyar. It's a yeah. fairly, uh, I mean, I would say middle class colony. We are not uh, rich or we are not, uh, we're not at the bottom level also. Uh, she was staying, she was not too old, 73 years old. Her son was staying outside because she didn't want to move to her son's place outside in Bangalore itself. So the the uh, the son rings up one day, not that he rings up every day, he rings up and he finds his mother not picking up the phone. So he finds that uh, something is wrong, maybe the phone is out of order or something like that. Um, so he comes rushing to the um, Jalwavi of the colony. It's a, it's a colony of 540 flats, low rise flats, not the high rise state. Mm -hmm. He rings the doorbell, he finds no response. And he breaks open the door and he finds his mother lying on the floor at 11 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. 11 o'clock, broad daylight in the morning. Mm -hmm. So this was something which triggered out the sky blue. At least if somebody is monitoring on a regular basis, then it cannot, it will not prevent a fall, but at least somebody will come to know that something is not okay. Mm -hmm. uh, a similar thing happening in, in a developed country like Canada, a husband and wife, so he could, um, so back to the uh, Jalvaviar story, so he could attend to his mother, take to the hospital or something like that, but it was, it was manageable. Now, the case in Canada is, is uh, quite, uh, is alarming. A husband and wife, the wife not old, about 55 years old, a paralyzed lying on a bed. And uh, the husband is able, right, I'm moving around everything. He trips and hits his head onto some piece of furniture and is lying uh, bleeding. No? The wife is not able to do because uh, she didn't have probably a phone close by or I don't know what is the issue. Uh, she could not. And Three, four days later, the stench from the body was so powerful that people broke open the door and found the lady still alive without food. They could um, um, bring her back to uh, normalcy as best as possible. 
the husband was there, dead for about three days or four days like that. No? Now, this is the thing, beauty about the sky blue alert services. At least somebody is monitoring. Yeah. Now, so that is where the thing started. Now, are we going to wait for an emergency for be supportive? And that's where the sky blue alert services, services comes from. Mm -hmm. Today with technology, you can get anything done, whether it's a Uber or a Ola or you want a big basket or a Swiggy or, or, or um, Zomato, everything is available with the apps available. And that, that's where I'm now working on. There's an, and uh, it is, it requires a lot of investments and people are all, uh, the business community, they are all thinking in terms of what is my return on investment? When will I, we may call angel investors and uh, what do you call, whatever we, the start, I mean, those who are funding, but many of them, uh, first of all, they need to understand that this is an area uh, which requires some amount of attention. And uh, when I scouted around, as I said, in the LinkedIn group, Everybody was talking in terms of hourly billing rate in dollars. And this would have been a huge fortune for with this uh, Sky Blue Alert services. And this will build up the volumes to get the revenue model because the, the services cannot be a, a charitable thing. Uh, we can use a part of it as a charity for subsidizing for people who can't afford. It cannot be only for the the... Uh, wealthy or the elite people, because there are a lot of people whom I see, they are abandoned in their own homes, uh, and the, the the wage earners they are going out to work, and they are not able to do their justice, and that's where we have to reach different levels: the economically weaker section, the middle class, and the now the the the, the wealthy people also. I went to some of these uh, posh places built by Mantri and other places. And they're all posh. They pay huge. The children, the children are the main people who will support the whole thing. They pay huge amounts, but when you talk to the people, they are not happy. They okay. don't want to move away from their own homes. And that's okay. where the services thing comes. And it has to be driven by technology with the infrastructure available. It is possible to see that we can have a good support service for people that could with a contribution, yeah, a subscription model, so that it, it can be made sustainable. Okay, so that's where we are right now. Okay, that's uh, uh, very you know as India is aging yeah. and really? popular, really? the old older people proportion of older people is rising, and we are in a paradox because we have a lot of young people, but we also have a lot <laughs> yeah. of old people, and how. Yeah we will manage. I'm glad you have thought about it and you are trying to put in some service which keeps the dignity and the lifestyle of the older people exactly. and yet makes it affordable because using the newest technology. So that's very good. Anything else you would like to add, sir? Yeah, we would like to use the existing infrastructure. See, what happens is when you want to think in terms of a new infrastructure, you have to pay people, you have to build um, uh, accommodation and all those things. That's a very cost in intensive thing. That's why I always keep stressing it's a cost effective thing. You're not just creating a separate infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't require uh, a separate uh, staffing or anything like that. Just a few volunteers. We, we do require some amount of paid people because you can't depend only on volunteers. The relationship and the technology development with all this AI and other things coming in. Uh, it requires more and more investment. So there has to be a subscription model. Not that uh, all the subscriptions will, will go for all these overheads, but you could get uh, volunteers uh, and paid people who can support. The, the thing is like that. Let's say that the whole concept of Sky Blue services is, there are two buttons on the smartphone. One is the Sky Blue button to say I'm okay. Yeah. The other button is for the services. Yeah. Let's say no, uh, again, uh, I mean, I'm talking about all actual cases. There's a lady about 25 kilometers away from where I stay. Uh, she, uh, she is about 85 years, 88 years. And her helpline is our car driver. 
the car driver does not turn up one day because once the car driver comes, he or he is a man Friday, he manages everything and he'll get everything done. So when the car driver does not come, she is so very upset that something is not working out all right in our pattern of life. No? So she rings up to somebody in cantonment area, which is again about 20 kilometers away. Uh, and that person doesn't have a driver to immediately send across to this lady who is staying in Dairy Circle. The, the National Dairy Development Board in Bangalore is called the Dairy Circle. They go, so she sends a message to somebody in Jayanagar area, which is relatively closer. And she happens to know a driver in that area and sends, and this lady is feeling so relieved that somebody has come, no? And what did she want? She just wanted a packet of milk and a few vegetables or something, which she would give to the maid who comes to cook or whatever would be the thing. Now, that's where the services come. It's not for emergencies. Emergencies can happen anytime and need not be on a regular basis. We need services. Let's say I want to go to the railway station and I don't have, I don't know how to book a Uber or Ola. Whereas when I put the on the help button, it goes to volunteers and relationship managers who know, who can be trained to use a simple uh, app like Uber or Ola or get Big Basket or Zomato or I uh, don't have a food. I'll have home cooked food from some particular home cloud kitchen or wherever it is. And the need is met. So these are the two issues which people commuting. Uh, and if I want medicines, I'll have, again, I have to depend on something. Today, everything is available on the app. Apps are available, whether it is um, uh, True Meds or, uh, yeah, I mean, all of these things have got these apps. No, you don't require to have a separate infrastructure. Tap the existing infrastructure. All that you require is intermediaries because as the older, as we get older, we are, um, we, we can't, we don't, we are not able to uh, match up to the technology Oh, I'm not talking about rocket science. I'm talking simple use of smartphone. If you ask a set of people, I know people who are just about 50, 50 55 years, are going to book it on. No, no, I don't know. My money will all go out. The yeah, yeah. Also, I'll be scammed. I'll put my details and I'll, my, my bank account will get the same. So they require an intermediary who can arrange to book a thing for me. Let's say I want to go to the railway station. Uh, when I put the help button, it goes first to the group. There's no compulsion for the group members to respond because they don't want to be tied up with me. Yeah. So it will go next time, it will go to the volunteer and relationship manager and they will have, they will give a ring to me and I find out what is the need. And I say all that I want is, I want to go to the railway station. So then they can be easily taught how to use a Uber or Ola Housewife sitting at home, you don't require very highly qualified people to use a smartphone. They need to be told you can give a ring to this number or you give and all that can be preloaded onto the smartphone. So just with a touch of, of your button, the relationship manager's job also needs to be simplified. We don't want highly paid, uh, what do you call, um, uh, this, uh, the, the the tele tele managers talking yeah. all that a simple technique that's okay. where I think the future we can do as technology improves and upgrades probably some of these things will be automated with AI and other things and when my fridge has got a shortage of milk automatically uh, it's already happening yeah. uh, it goes to the supplier who supplies the milk or vegetables or something like that. Okay, so that's well, thank you, thank you, sir. It's wonderful to hear somebody who is trying to solve a very practical problem and a problem uh, that I think will actually increase in India. Uh, people are so uh, thinking that India is a young country that they forget that India is actually an aging, country. aging country. It's an aging country, and uh, we have to, you know, the joint family is long gone in the urban areas, so we can't have that. So what's the model for the older people? That's something we are figuring it out, and I'm very happy to hear that. Is there anything else you want to add here, sir, before we close? Uh, I do not know the viewers right now. Uh, 
for having a working model of an app. I've, as I said, I'm talking to somebody. But they're all. Uh, I've I've already committed that uh, I'll put um, uh, whatever is possible from my side. But then when they talk in terms of lakhs and all that, uh, I don't have that type of deep pockets to keep. Uh, so roughly, I figured out with about fifty lakhs. I don't want one crore also. We could have a working app and have a trial model with uh, the people who are willing to try it out. Now there is one issue with uh, the 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 elders have got their own mindset. When you ask them that I worked with two other organizations, Good Hands, there was an organization called Good Hands, which was trying to address this type of thing with volunteers and paid subscription, and then SDFC Zeal, uh, New Life, this insurance arm. They tried it again, a free model. Uh, it's called. It was called Zeal. They closed it down because they couldn't. They found that it is not sustainable. They employed MSWs, Master of Social Work people, paying them, and they found that it is not sustainable. And people wanted only to take and not contribute. When I went around with the subscription model, uh, they said, "No, no, you are there. Other people are there. My friends are there. They will do their job." So the target audience has to be not the elders because. As an elder person, we are very, very careful about our money, and we do not know how long the uh, retirement uh, savings will last. So, they, we would like to. Um, um, uh, the target audience has to be the children. Yes. Who feel that they need to do something for their parents. They may do great things globally, and it's not alone uh, globally. I'm talking with the people in Bangalore. There are. I'm staying in a colony of 540 flats. And there are a lot of elderly people. The children are all away, and not necessarily in US or anywhere. They are away from Bangalore, no, for their job requirement. They can't leave their job and come and attend only to the parents' requirement. No? So okay. that's where the challenges end. Okay. Well, thank you so much for this very enlightening and very relevant uh, discussion. Thank you, sir. Let's thank end you, it sir. here. Let's end it here. And okay, maybe sir. we'll catch up with you once again at some point. I'll be back with another young person or an expert soon. Till then, bye, everybody. Okay, sir.